Hello, welcome to another tutorial from Moo ICT. Uh, today will be our first try into the WPF format and c -sharp programming. Uh, the WPF format stands for Windows Presentation Foundation. It's the new app development framework made by Microsoft and it's been out for a while. Um, it's basically seen as the successor to Windows Form apps that we have been using so far to make different games. Uh, but from here on, we, I'm going to be making uh, WPF format tutorials, so it's a lot easier for us to you know start with the basics and go through. So this is going to be our very first um, example. We're going to be making a calculator app uh, where we can add, subtract, multiply, and divide it to numbers. So let's just take a quick look at the app. Okay, so what we've done here is we created a um, app inside a grid format. So I can put two different numbers here. So I can say, say for example a3 and a2 right so if i add them the total comes to five subtract one multiply that six and then divide that to 1.5 let's just get started by making a new project okay so inside the project window what we're going to do is uh, select create a new project so uh, right here you'll see all of this so because i have used this one before it comes up here in my recent projects template if you can't find it, you can always type in WPF like so. And then uh, just be aware there is another one called WPFapp.net core. We don't need the .NET core one. What we want to use is the .NET framework. So that's where we can actually make the stuff that we want to make for it. Okay, so click on that. Go to next. Let's name this project. Calculator app more ICT. Okay, so this is the default app window. Um, you'll notice that there's a few things that are different in this one than the Windows form. Uh, first of all, we don't have the usual um, the usual properties one that we used to have the similar way. Uh, you still got your toolbox and stuff like that, but one of the best things about WPF is that we can actually type in the tools that we want inside this part here so this uh, this part is for the xaml code so it's similar to xml uh, programming language and so we're going to go over some of the basics and then uh, we're going to get started on the app development so if i just zoom out of this one here i'm just using the control and the wheel on the mouse so i can zoom out and see what i'm working with right. when we begin the app it usually starts off by default with a grid we can change this to a few other so uh, at the moment we're going to be leaving that as a grid so let's go and change a few things in the title first so the title right here you can type in there calculator app or ICT and we can leave the height and with exactly the same so the title actually comes up right there Okay, so now uh, what we are interested in is what we're going to do. We're going to create a couple of columns and rows so we can put the stuff that we need to put inside of this app. Uh, so let's go and make a few things. So say for example, grid dot column definition. So we're going to start that. Then as you can see, it ends the tag there for us. So anything that we want to put for the grid column definition, we can put it inside of this. Okay, so let's go with the first column. So I say column definition, we can say width. Uh, so this one to 10. And then we'll end that tag. Do another one. Width, set this one to say 760. And that one there. And then we do another grid here. So another column. Set that one to 10 again. Okay. So what we've done here is we created three columns, right? So we've got one, two, and three. So as you can see, we because we set them to 10. So if I were to let's say, for example, set that to like let's say um a hundred, right? So you'll be able to see that this grid here gets bigger. So uh, a grid is a way for us to sort of organize the information that we have in there. Uh, there are a few other options that we can do, but for this app, we're going to leave it as this. So now we need to define the rows. Let's go to grid. Row definitions. Then end that tag there. Move that up a little bit. 
let's say row definition this one is height so we can set the first one's height to 100 and end that with the slash and the greater than sign then we need to do another row set this one's height to say 150 Okay, so see the rows are showing up on the display and then we need to set another one and set this one's height to 100. Okay, the reason we use uh, grids is because it's a lot better to do the calculations with the display. Also, you can make the app responsive, which means that it will work, it doesn't matter which resolution that you're using it in, it will still be able to sort of align itself with it. Okay, so we need a couple of things uh, for this app so first one is we're going to need the label right uh, this label is going to be the title for this app which is going to be placed inside this column here in this row so let's start with this label and then give this one a font size first so say font size is 20 um, we can go to the width set that to width to auto for now Say horizontal alignment, horizontal content alignment is to center. And then vertical content alignment also to center. Okay, so you see, although we are just um, refining one label, we can put these options inside of it. It's almost as if we are changing it inside the properties. Okay, so and then what we'll do is we will put this inside the column, the first column here. Say grid column to one. Okay, so then now when we end that tag right here, uh, what happens is that you can see that something's been selected inside of it. Because this label is so far empty, we just need to fill in what we want to fill into it. So you can say WPF C sharp calculator app. Okay, so it's horizontally aligning all the content is vertically aligning the content so it's in the middle and it's also placing it inside the first column there that column that we actually wanted to place it into because this column here is zero so if we set to set to that to zero here then it would have placed it in there but that's why we can't see it but because we want it in the middle that's why we kept it larger okay so now let's add two text boxes so similar way again so I'll say text box block okay uh, because we need to um, find them inside the c-sharp code we need to name them so let's say name is num a okay font size we're gonna set the font size to 20 text alignment is going to be center so we want it in the center of the box vertical alignment is going to be center then let's go to grid row so we want it one uh, on the second row right so grid row one and then grid dot column we want it to one so if you didn't mention it you would have defaulted to the first one okay so if we end that here we can see that's the text box there now but we will um you know resize it in a minute so if i just put zero zero inside of this so you can see it Okay, excellent. So we still have the option to resize the things manually as well. So we can go and resize it to how we want it. So say for example, I'll just move it here. Visual Studio has added some margins to it. And then he also added the height option there as well. So I think the height option, we can say it's like 40. The second one's going to be pretty much identical to the first one. We can just copy and paste that to here. So now we see we need to change the name to num b and then just move that from there to there so now what we'll do is we'll go and add the results label so we just need another label here okay so this one is name result say horizontal content alignment is center and we go vertical content alignment is going to be center as well grid column is one 
and then we also have the grid row the row to two okay so that's been placed there and then we can just say result here I think we list the font size to 20 they're quite big you can also make that slightly smaller because we don't need it that big and have it slightly smaller like that okay because we're going to put the buttons right here so let's go here and type in button so this is going to be the button for the add right because then by default it gets added right here so we don't need it there what we need it for is we need it to be um right in the middle so we need to put that down here now so you can say grid the row to say two and then we have the second one and then grid dot column to one so it's right here okay and then let's say width 50 and then height to another 50. okay so we can just move that over here for now right so i'm just going to copy that a few times so we need four buttons so now that we have copied it four times let's just click on them so make sure you don't click on anything else make sure you click on the empty body part and then you can start moving it over okay so we just, just place them out nicely and then just place them okay uh, one of the issues that we had during programming in the windows form was when we double clicked on it it would have added a um event inside the c sharp and then you know if you deleted the event it kind of just crashed the program we don't have that issue anymore in wpf which is a great thing so let's just go and change that to subtract now subtract like so change that to multiply and then divide so the nice thing is we can add the events that we want to add right inside of the um, code here so i think i want to make the buttons slightly bigger okay so i just hold um shift and then i clicked on each of them to make them uh, select them all all right so now go back to the um button tags again and now we can just link a click event to here so say click calculate add like so let's click on this one here say click calculate subtract say click calculate multiply and then click calculate divide okay so we put all four of these buttons down here so at the moment if we try to let's say run the app right so if i just go and click so it tells me here that there's a problem and the problem is that we mentioned events but we haven't created those events in the c-sharp program yet okay so if i go and minimize that then so the easiest ways to do this is if you just right click on them and then just say click on go to definition so if you right click on the calculate add that keyword there and then just click on go to definition you will simply add that event there so let's just do that for the rest okay, so now we're back in the familiar territory here so let's go and add a couple of global variables that we need for this game so say int first number right integer second number and then we will also need a int total so let's do the add one first because that's going to be the sort of the template that we use for the rest of them except for the divide one divide one is going to be slightly different so what we need to do is we need to capture the words that are typed inside of these and then convert them to a integer and then save them inside our first number and second number okay so let's say first number right here equals to convert dot two int 32 okay 
and then obviously we say num a so see he actually picks it up num a dot text right let's do the second one num b 32 num b 32 no num b dot text And then we always say is total is equals to obviously first number plus second number. And then we'll go to result dot content. Um, in the old version, we would have to check for the result dot text, but in the new label for the WPF, we need to check for result dot content. Okay, and then we'll just say here total to string. Okay, so what it's going to do is going to find whatever value that's inside the total here and you're going to calculate it to a string so uh, change it to a string and then display it on the label here okay so let's go and run this up now and let's find out how it works so here we go so let's see if we okay that's good because we, since we put the numbers inside of the grid that's why it doesn't scale which is exactly what we want so let's say two plus two click on add it gives us four right here Perfect. Okay, so what we're gonna do is just gonna copy this here and then paste it. Okay, and then in this case this is just going to change to a minus and then do that again here. And that's gonna to change to a star sign here. Asterisk. And then that should do for the three. If I run it again, it should go to a two, and then two, that's four. That should be zero and that should be four again okay now let's quickly do the divide so inside the divide one uh, what we need to do is uh, we still need to capture these two as integers and then we will need to cast them as doubles and then because divide numbers will have a decimal point and if we divide two numbers together and convert them to integer if it's like let's say 0 0.75 then it's going to come up as zero because you know it's below zero so that's uh, that's because integers don't support decimal numbers so let's go and try that out first so convert to int32 then do the second number here oh I'll exclude Let's do the second number here. That text. Okay. And now what we'll do is we will declare a new total variable with a type of double. Okay, so I'll say total equals and then we'll just do cast double here say first number second oh, first number so it's the first number again second number there and then let's go to the result the content equals two string now uh, one of the interesting things here is that we will we have got the chance to minimize the number of decimal points that displays on the screen we only want maximum of two decimal numbers to be shown after the decimal so you can say here um Ash dot ash ash. So that way, no matter how big the number is, it will only show the first two decimal points there. Okay, and then we'll just put that inside of quotations so that we actually convert it to a string. Okay, let's go have a go at this. So, say for example, I got three here and then I got a four there. So, four divided by three is 0.75. Okay, so and then if I had 15 here, is 3.75 so it's stopping it at, at the 2 right there okay so this has been the tutorial for uh, the WPF calculator basic calculator app uh, I do hope you guys are enjoying this I have got a few other projects in mind I need to do tutorial for so you know we'll be learning uh, WPF and C sharp together as we go along so I will be keeping you guys updated thank you so much for watching and I will see you on the next one